Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, my name is Tom Robbins. I'm with Kentico CMS, and I appreciate everyone taking the time to join us today on our webinar session, starting with social media customer care. Uh, Kentico has a long history of being involved with content management and online marketing, uh, and we we tend to like to partner with uh, other companies that bring out the best in us. And one of the, the things that we've been very impressed with uh, our partner today, Brand Embassy, is that they've taken their spin on social media to really the next level. So one of the, the really big things is obviously just being able to put things out into the social media area, but really being able to take it to the next level uh, is an important part of being successful in how you think about your marketing strategy and how you think about taking care of your brand. Um, and part of that is uh, really being able to look at it not as just a, as social media, but really being able to look at it as a call center and being able to, to deal with issues as they come up, which makes me really uh, happy to, to introduce uh, our technology partners for Kentigo CMS of Brand Embassy, who've agreed to, to come and spend some time with us today talking about their solution as well as some of the issues that they see within the social media area that uh, they've actually helped uh, help solve and, and things that their, their product helps solve. So uh, Vic, could you move on to the next slide for me? Um, and with that in mind, we, we've worked closely with Brand Embassy and uh, we're happy to offer a 15% discount for Kentico CMS customers. And really what this does is it, it will get you going uh, with their free 14-day trial, and then you're going to see some real value in the product, uh, and then you can use your 15% discount on that. They, they've really made it uh, pretty easy to sign up. And kind of with that in mind, I think it's it really is an opportunity for Kentico customers to, to leverage kind of the next generation of being of managing social media using uh, the tools that Brand Embassy provides. So I know that uh, as the Brand Embassy folks uh, talk a little bit more, uh, they're actually going to 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 offer this again towards the end. So I definitely recommend that that folks take advantage of it. So uh, Vic, could you move on to the next slide for me? So without kind of uh, further ado, I know that uh, people generally come to hear about the solution, which is, which is pretty exciting on its own. Um, I just want to take a second and introduce uh, some of our speakers today, and I know that they're going to introduce themselves a little bit more. Uh, Vit, who, Vit Horky, who I've been working with uh, as we get ready for this, is uh, the co-founder and CEO of Brand Embassy. Uh, Jorge, as well as Matt Butler, are all here from Brand Embassy today, and they're they're going to all help present uh, and and answer and ask uh, and ask and answer questions. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Vit. Uh, Vit, you there? Yes, I'm here, Tom. Great, Vit. Uh, please take it away. So, Tom, thank you very much for introducing today's webinar and actually thank you for having us today for the invitation to share some of our thoughts about social media customer care to the audience. And good day to everyone. I hope that you'll enjoy the upcoming 40-45 minutes of our webinar, including uh, Q&A. Um, I'm co-founder and CEO of Brand Embassy. I'm Vid Horky. And with me today, uh, there's a Matt Butler, who is a head of product at Brand Embassy. Hello, everybody. And also, in just a couple of minutes, uh, Jorge Vaca, our commercial director of Brand Embassy, will join us also. He's actually just finishing up a call with a couple of clients on, in different, in different meeting rooms. Um, just to give you some uh, thoughts about the agenda today, uh, we will be talking about four main topics. The first one, we will start with the social media key statistics, talking about why is social media so important to the businesses today. We will follow up with the community management versus a social care. Then the third chapter will be about social media and what it means for money, what it means for your businesses. And we will close the discussion 
with the key opportunities and benefits waiting for the businesses at the field of social media customer service. At the end, at the very end of the webinar today, we'll have at least 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A, so prepare your questions, we'll be more than happy to answer as many of them. The webinar will be also available on the Kentica DevNet website, so if you'll miss anything, you'll be able to find it then online. Just to give you a very brief idea about what Brand Embassy is, Brand Embassy is a next level customer service platform. It's like a call center, but on social media. The platform is used by large brands, including, for example, Vodafone, Telefonica O2, T-Mobile, General Motors in Latin America, or ING Insurance Company. Brand Embassy, with operations in Europe, North America, United States and Australia, and Latin America. The company is supported by UK Trade and Investment Fund and by British Tax City. You can find more information about our company on www.brandembassy.com. The company is driven by rapid technical innovation. That's our focus. So that's why Brand Embassy acquired a company just recently that is called Beeple. Beeple is a British startup with a unique semantic technology. And because we believe that we can automate actually a lot of processes on customer service, we also will believe that by giving uh, a semantic analysis and automated analysis into customer service platform, we will then let the businesses to have more time for the actual conversations with the customers. Just hot news from today, I just uh, got back from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Uh, we actually won a very special prize. Uh, Brand Embassy is actually the only Czech-based company and only one of four companies in the Central European region which finds success at the competition this year and it listed in Red Herring's top 100. Brand Embassy is now also a candidate for the Awards Globalist. Uh, just to give you an idea about what Red, red Herring is, the Global Red Herring 100 Top Award uh, highlights the exciting and the most innovative startups from the technical field from Asia, Europe and the Americas. So this was just very briefly about Brand Embassy and let's get to the meat of the webinar and that's actually uh, why is social media customer care important to the businesses and what is actually the difference between community management and social media customer service. I will now give birth to Matt Butler and he will continue with the social media key statistics. Matt. Hi, Hi everybody. Uh, thanks, Pete. Um, so it's a great opportunity and I'm very thankful to be able to talk to everybody today. It's, it's always great to talk to a new audience about social media and, and customer care. Um, I was told that I'm going to have quite a mixed audience with a range of uh, experience, so I'm going to start out by um, going through some of the basic social media key statistics, so we all have a nice basis to, to go forward and start trying to understand some of the strategies that we're going to talk about a little bit later. So to begin with, I'm going to start talking about the importance and how, uh, how many people are using social media and then go on to how they're using it. So last year was a very big year for a platform such as Twitter. Uh, their, their user base doubled, and that user base is sending more than 25 billion tweets. So it's an incredible, uh, incredibly large conversation that's going on over there. Um, the average Twitter follower follows five friends, and that's on average. But <clears throat> we have uh, we have our super tweet Twitter users, um, people who have are using it quite a lot, uh, heavy users. And on average, heavy users are following more than 20 brands. And you girls have to remember that they are heavy users, so they're tweeting more, they're sharing more. And so they're really having a big impact on, on how that brand is being perceived in that social space. Um, and then a little bit about Facebook. So um, more than 90% of Facebook's users like brands on, on Facebook. So that's it's 9 in 10 people almost. Um, well, it's more than that. Um, and these people are using Facebook as their primary source of information for branded content. 
So it's very important um, that your brand is there in the first place, so that that content was written about about your brand was written about you in the first place, and also that you can actually have some kind of control over the interactions that's going on there. You can try and guide the conversation so it's it's aligned with your your campaign purposes. So right now, the people using these social media tools, you have to remember that. Um, their early, the early adopting stage is, has ended, so now uh, now more types of users are, are using it. Uh, but those uh, early users and those um, those early adopters, sorry, and the younger generation who's grown up with having Twitter in their pocket, for example, um, now social media is really becoming the go-to tool for customer service because they don't understand why they should call a company and be on hold for five to ten minutes. That's an experience they've never had, and it doesn't sound like a very fun one. So it's much easier for them to pull out their phone and tweet, put it away, and not think about it for 10 to 15 minutes while they wait for a response. These kind of people are showing others that this is being done, that they're getting great service uh, and really it takes no effort on their part. Uh, they don't have to invest their time on that call. And they don't have to waste their phone credit on a, on a phone call. So <clears throat> other people are seeing this done. So we're seeing real traction in, in not only in brands using social media for customer service, but that need, the, the number of customers trying to, get, um, trying to get companies to respond to them on social media, which we'll talk about in uh, just a couple of slides. So what do these conversations look like, those 25 billion tweets? Well, when, when people are talking to companies about brands and products, um, just a very quick breakdown. So 11 of these people are using it to complain. It's a very small number, and it's not actually the majority of the, the conversations about your brand are there. The people aren't really using it to complain as much as they're using it to praise your brand, to share your content. Um, those, when you're publishing your content, you rely on your customers uh, on social media to extend your message and amplify your, your, your message. And so, but the real thing is that 42% of people are not there to praise or complain or share. They're just asking for help. So 33% of the people who are actually actively commenting online when they're talking to brands, all they want is help. And that's very easy to provide. So why is uh, community management not, not enough, really? So here are some very broad and basic, uh, basic statistics, which are very important right now. So 88% of customers are less likely to buy from a brand that ignores questions and complaints on social media. I think the reason for this is obvious. People don't like being ignored. Um, and especially if, if, you're, if, you're, if your brand is not on social media, somebody else is going to put your brand on social media for you. You can't control that image, but because you've left, such a, you've left this space vacant for so long, either an advocate of your brand is going to try and bring your presence there to try and share that experience with others, or a detractor of your brand, somebody who hates your brand so much that they're actually motivated to create a Twitter or a Facebook channel attacking it. And it, it's, it happens to a lot of brands who, who leave that space vacant for too long. Um, so 88% of those customers are, be, are being ignored. Or no, sorry, 88% are less likely. Um, the, next, the next point is linked to what I was saying just a couple of slides ago. So, over percent, over 30 percent of brand mentions by customers are typically get posted outside of your official social channels. So if you're not there, people don't know where they're supposed to be directing their conversations. So um, if a fan community has created a Twitter channel based around your brand, they're going to start taking their complaints to the fans of your brand and start highlighting what they don't like to a group of people who really do like your brand. Um, so what it is is when you start creating a, a social channel and start creating some uh, a presence, uh, customers know where to go when they want to find content, when they want to just tell you that you're doing a good job, or when they want to find this help and when they want to complain about your brand. So if you're not there, you're missing an opportunity to for, to control and get feedback. Really. So these conversations are always going to happen if you're not there, and if you're not there, you cannot manage a crisis. And if, you're, if your influence is spread very thinly across various different channels which you don't own, you have no control over a crisis when that conversation starts, starts going a little bit viral and out of your control. So the main point of our talk today is, is to talk about how companies need to not only just invest in social media, 
but they need to be able to re respond to customers in a timely manner so that those conversations which are negative, those complaints, are dealt with quickly so that other customers coming to your channel can see, can see uh, how you're resolving these issues, what kind of support they're likely to receive if they were also your customer. And also, because, because we're going to have to have multiple people within our organization using the tool, not only do we have to re uh, respond in a timely manner, we have to use a real workflow that's going to really help us to get the right conversations to the right people within our organization so that we can actually help them with help that is work, work, sorry, with help, helpful advice that is real connected to the people they're, they're, uh, they need the help from. So now I'm going to talk about a little bit about the difference between um, community management and social, social customer service. And the reason why uh, it's important to make a definition is because um, these are not competing practices. But social media customer service is built upon community management. Community management is your, is your first step uh, in establishing a, a social channel. What you're going to start doing is so you're going to spend most of your time actually listening and learning to where the community is and what it is that they're talking about. How many of your customers are talking negatively? What kind of problems are they having and what are the reasons for that negative dissatisfaction? And what do your customers like? What are they talking about? What areas of your product? Um, resonate well with your online customers. Um, and also, which parts of your current campaigns are they sharing the most? Which, what, what kind of reach do those campaigns have? And so also, what kind of help do customers need? And so the very first stage of community management is really this listening and learning and trying to strategize and create and find areas in which you can create goals uh, to try and have meaningful objectives on social. So community management is all about building communities. So not only are you looking to see where those conversations are taking place, you're also trying to find out what they're about so that you can start getting involved. And here I'm not talking especially just on Twitter or Facebook. I'm also talking like on forums and on the rest of the web. So if you find forums where customers like a particular aspect of your product, so if you're a large brand, for example, um, such as a car manufacturer, um, if you have an old model of car and you find the community of fans in a forum, um, when when the when people need help, maybe they're not talking to the right people in that forum. So you can say, "Hey, Steve, if you come over to this forum over here, this this user full of user generated content, you might actually find the answer that you're looking for." Or alternatively, just tweet us if you need any help. So what you start, what you're trying to do when you build communities is you're trying to help customers identify with the right communities so that they can feel a sense of belonging. We start creating these niche communities that we can identify, classify, and, and uh, focus our marketing efforts in a, in a very specific way. It's all about niches uh, on social. So again, we're supporting communities. So we're actually also trying to help bring the right kinds of advocates uh, from our brand. So customers who really like certain areas of our brand, we learn what it is that they like. We try and connect them to people who don't like certain as that, that aspect of your brand. Because maybe they don't like it because they're having trouble with it and they don't understand it. And so Customers who do love your brand, they actually know more about your your product than your best well-trained customer service teams because they they're passionate about it and they've probably pushed your products to the edge of what they're capable of. So when you connect those to dissatisfied customers, not only are they a little bit annoyed that this other person doesn't quite get it, they're usually quite keen to change that person's opinion of the brand, for example. And then finally, we're talking about managing communities. And so this is how this is this links on to what I was saying about moving people around and just connecting them to the right types of content that they want. We're trying to increase, we're trying to make their experience a little bit on, online, a little bit more personal to them so that it re resonates with them much stronger. But the whole idea of community management is to create communities of people who are positively engaged, creating conversations, and don't really see communicating with you online as a barrier. They're really interested in sharing even the smallest detail about their, their brand experience and they're interested in your updates. And so social care is uh, community management, but when your employees are actually internal, these internal employees who are connected to social. So your customer service people who normally are answering the phone are actually connected to your customers also online. Um, also, you, it's different areas of your company that use social as an actual channel for getting things done. 
And so what this does is you can start unifying the experience. The same people who help you when you pick up a phone are the same people who help you when you call them on Twitter, uh, when you send them a tweet, sorry. And so that's great because it's the same customer experience as I would get if I call. Also, your, your, the staff in your, in your stores, if you have offline stores, uh, there's no reason why they, they can't be connected to your customers online also. You can always you can get into this conversation where, oh, you're in this certain area? Well, I'm based here, so you can come and see me in the store in the next hour or so, and we'll help you solve your problem face-to-face. -face. If not, we can deliver that kind of service online. And so you're really providing customers with more opportunities to have their problems solved, and this unique, unique, um, unique experience for each customer. I'm willing to go above and beyond. And of course, you be connecting these conversations to the right people in your organization um, by using keyword monitoring. When, we're in a, when you get a conversation, analyzing its content and understand who in your organization needs to receive this message. So this is we're, we're helping to increase satisfaction because we're not just saying, I'm sorry that you're having a bad experience. We're saying, we're sorry that you've had a bad experience, and here's the solution. So we're increasing the satisfaction and people on that, other customers who are witnessing these conversations take place are seeing resolutions being made right now. We're reaching solutions. And so, yeah, we're reaching uh, greater audiences by doing this because these are customers creating conversations and customers have friends, they have followers who are interested in what their friends are doing. So we're introducing great customer service within that, within that customer's community. So we're, re we're creating larger audiences. And of course, a satisfied customer is more likely to share content and so, and, and so introduce you to their audience. And finally, it um, prevents communication crisis. And the reason for this is you have a dedicated social channel and where you have your resources and you're controlling the general flow of conversation around your brand. Um, you're able to try and prevent communication crisis because remember, these, these employees using this channel are connected internally. So as soon as we start developing, as we notice a trend in the types of conversations our customers are having, it's about a particular topic, it's about a thing that we don't normally deal with, for example, we can start alerting the people in our organization who are responsible for this, uh, this kind of response, to try and get a response out there quickly. So that if you're, if you're having a service issue, um, you, can start, you can start doing the work behind the scenes to solve that issue much, much earlier. So I'm going to move on now, um, start talking about the, the, why this, how this is going to save you money, <coughs> make you money, socially is money. Um, so really, you have to understand that social media is a two-way street. So you're not the only one reaching large audiences. Uh, it's, make, it's also easier for customers to reach you. It's also easier for customers to reach larger audiences. And all this is going on in our public space. So when a customer has the most stellar service and they're so happy with their, with their, with their customer experience, they're going to share that because they had something other people didn't, or at least that's how they perceive it. So they're going to share that experience with others. Well, they have large numbers of people following them too. And each one of your customers is, is at the heart of their own community. So you're sharing your content outside of your own influence. So, uh, and also you're directing users to your social content. Um, so you have your offline campaigns. You have your marketing campaigns. And so it's time to start introducing this to your social campaigns. The social campaigns don't have to be short bursts of a quick, quirky social message. We're going to try and give them the same experience that they're having offline, the same experience that they're having on your website. We're going to connect them to the content that's valuable on your website and it's valuable within certain communities. So we're going to start using the tools that social media gives us um, to try and make sure that it's empowering customers to be able to find this content and enjoy their experiences. And the real issue is when, if you're not taking care of your customers and you're using it only as a marketing channel, when they get there, when other customers get there and they're following your marketing, what are they going to see when they get there? Are they going to see customers' complaints being unanswered? Are they going to see customers complaining that you've deleted their complaint? Or are, you, are they going to see you responding to customers, going above and beyond, and using social as a means to solve problems and create relationships with other customers? I think, this, I think the second is, is a much better experience for a customer when they, when they followed your marketing. Um, 
when they're following your conversions and they're they're on your social social channels. So some of the opportunities in social is like uh, is from the 2012 Click Cockbox Consumer Survey. There was a lot of numbers and data that I was really really excited to hear about. So one of these is that 50 percent of customers polled um, reported negative experiences with customer service via phone. And I think that we all know the reason because we've all had to call a, a call center. It's the uh, the endless options before you talk to a human being. It's the five to two hours of waiting before you speak to a human being. And it's also the fact that you don't know if you're going to have your problem solved in one phone call. And you might have to go through all this again. Um, I personally hate calling friends. Um, so people hate that experience. So when, uh, when they ask them what kind of, how would you like to solve these issues? So 52% of people want to go to in-store managers. And you can understand that because it's face to face and you know you're going to get uh, something done. You're not going to be ignored if you're in front of, in front of a store manager, for example. Um, and 33% of people will call a customer service hotline. So even though if they have this negative experience, a call center is still incredibly valuable to our organization. Um, not everybody is on social. Um, to some people, it's easier. They, they like the fact that when they call, they know them. So, so, so uh, hotlines are still going to be important. What's important is almost 40% of people would rather do it over social media. And I think that's because they can just send a quick tweet. And there's a few minutes, there's a few minutes of their time and it's not all in one go. You pull out your phone, you find the brand, you tell them your complaint, you, and you will get a beat when, when, uh, when you have a response. It's, it's, it's really that easy. And if you think about the people using social media, the, uh, the generation who have always grown up with the internet, uh, now they have it in their phone, and now they're making purchasing decisions. Um, in the next four years, this, 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 these will be the dominant generation in the workforce to making even more purchase decisions. This is how they want to talk to brands, because it's, they don't have to think about it, and it's quick, and it's easy, and it gives, uh, it gives, it gives both sides, the customer and the brand, a, a time in between the conversations, so, because it's, it's, a shared, it's a shared conversation. So at the moment, only 30 per, th only 30 percent of these messages directed at brands are getting a response, and so that's doubled in the last 12 months almost. So you can see that people are, are gravitate, gravitating towards social as a as a means of communication, but there's also a massive gap in the companies that are providing social customer service and the companies that are not. So there's here is opportunity to go above and beyond your competitors and start creating standards in your industry instead of playing catch up in a few years. And so 20% and of people in the last year have used customer service and failure to provide them customer service, it results in negative publicity, uncontrollable, because you're, you're not controlling this, this conversation. And the reason for that is people get really annoyed when you ignore them, like really. And so they tell their friends, I cannot believe this, this company I'm paying this money is ignoring me. They're, they're supposed to be there. Um, I know somebody's there because they're, they're sending messages every, every hour, sending me to a link on their website, but they're ignoring me. So really people are kind of expecting at least a conversation. So the added value of social care. So if we're doing social care, what does that actually do for us? So you have to remember that every single one of these conversations is public. When somebody calls your call center, you record that conversation for training purposes because it helps your, it helps your customer service teams help other people better because they have the, the, they have the benefit of experience. In social, every single conversation is public. So not only are you, the people in your organization learning from all these public conversations where you've solved people's problems and you can see how you've dealt with it, customers are also able to see this. And they're also able to train themselves with your product. It's very great for troubleshooting. This customer had this problem, and this was, the, this was the, how they solved it. Now I don't have to call that company. Now I don't have to send them a message. And what's most important is now you don't have to answer the phone, and you don't have to respond to that customer. You're, you're creating content that's valuable and beneficial. And so this allows for peer-to-peer -peer customer care. So your customers, your advocates, are actually going to help other customers. They don't like it when other people are having a bad experience with something that they care and love about. 
It's so when they can read, they can find out how other customers are are being helped, and they can start applying that uh, and start just mentioning to other customers, "Oh, that's your that's your problem, and just do this, man." And it creates real conversations and it, with real value and help. We're increasing the confidence to purchase because our customers are seeing that we're answering customers quickly, that the responses we're giving are useful, and that when they know that whenever they're going to have a problem, they're going to have that problem solved. But it's also lower, lowering the barriers to information and services. A customer knows you're there. And they know that if I just send a quick tweet, they're going to respond to me, and I'm going to have that information that I need. So even, even yesterday, I was, uh, I was thinking about buying Microsoft Windows 8, and I had to really make a decision. I, I, there's this one little thin piece of information I need to know about like language packs. I sent them a tweet. Within two minutes, I had a response. So now I'm able to make that decision. Um, so yeah, Pete, um, I'm going to pass you over to Pete now, and he's going to talk a little bit about how some of our customers are using social media. Before I'll get started, uh, thank you, Matt, for giving me the word. Um, I'll just repeat what we are offering uh, we, uh, for today for for all the people who joined us today on the webinar. Uh, we say sign up for demo at Brentham's website with 14-day free trial and a special 15% discount for the first year. So just go to www.brandtembassy.com/signup. Select a plan of your choice and insert a special code to offer, Kentico. If you're a web design or marketing agency, just sign up for a special webinar with a demo for you and learn how you can add more value to your clients and earn a market commission. Just send your name and email in the chat panel now. I'm going to talk more now about the key opportunities and benefits of social care or if you say social media customer service. You're using social media as a powerful tool to successfully amplify your campaign networks. Social media is making it easier for you for your content to be connected to users who care about what you have to say. Social media is a level playing field your customers have access to the same tools, are connected to the same people, and social media is making it easier for their content to be connected to users who care about what they have to say. Therefore, customer problems can have the same or even higher social reach and influence than your company marketing efforts, than your marketing money. Being prepared to engage dissatisfied customers and actually embrace their willingness to communicate with a brand is a must for every customer-oriented company. So, based on what Matt was saying, and uh, there were some very interesting facts, I basically created this slide of six key benefits of social media customer care that are relevant to you guys. The first one is relevant to brand benefits and increased reputation. The second one is about decreasing costs of your current costs. The third is about increasing customer retention, about increasing loyalty of your customers. The fourth one is about improving response time speed, which means being able to respond to your customers faster so they don't have to wait so long. Number five is about improving customer experience, about knowing that your customers feel better when they communicate with your brand, and you are making them a bit more happier. And the last but not least, it's about greater consumer insights and new business improvements. I will go one by one and tell you a little bit more about what I think, uh, why these key benefits are very relevant to what you guys are doing in your different kind of businesses. With brand benefits and increased reputation, it's clear. When a brand engages its customers in a conversation with a single objective to help them, it increases a reputation among the customer communities. Customer care saves costs also, and this is relevant to the second point. 
Customer care saves costs on how you take care of your customers by shifting from expensive call centers to a convenient, low-cost platform on average by 20%. Besides, one ambassador, one operator on social media can look after more customers within the same amount of time, even at the same time. But there is also another element of decreasing costs, and it's about lower researching costs, about knowing about your customers more with less money. The software, the system, together with the train agents, will categorize and add sentiment to social conversations as they work, giving you deep, actionable insight into what your customers want, market, social, and opinion research. This is not statistical approximation of the specific target audience, using social media. This is 100% reliable as it comes directly from your users, from your customers. If you want to increase the customer retention, uh, then social media customer care is very relevant and useful to you also. You lose customers every day, uh, but you do not realize it until when it's already late, just before they made the decision to leave. Social care platforms are able to listen to your dissatisfied customers in real time, helping you decrease the probability of losing them. But it's also about improving the response time that your customers don't have to wait so long. Agents can increase workload and productivity and thus achieve lower response times to your customers, reaching your KPIs, your key performance indicators. Social care will also help you to improve the customer experience. How? Social care platforms put you and your brand in direct contact with your customers. This obviously brings also way better knowledge of your customers and better consumer insights. Therefore, even your product managers will be happy about the insights your company is gathering on social web. And you can use it to actually improve the quality of your products or of your services. And one more thing, it's about increasing security also. Permissions to social channels like Facebook pages or Twitter channels will be managed within your social care platform. It's reducing risk of multiple, multiple users security breaches. Your ambassadors or your operators do not need to know the company passwords to your social channels. And once they leave the social care platforms, or other, uh, there will not be a risk of misutilization. So it's bringing a complete transparency. I want to share with you two, two case studies very, very shortly. The first one is about ING, uh, the insurance, the large international insurance company. The second story, the second case study, will be about uh, one of the mobile operators. ING effectively identified and engaged the target audience by using Brand Embassy. This case study is about using social media customer care for marketing purposes. The challenge of the client was that he needed to create an, an ING online community for women to discuss breast cancer and day-to-day -day problems and to inform women about the For You insurance plan and provide support. For You is the name of the product they, they were launching on the market to very specific niche of women in the Central Europe, specifically in the Czech Republic. The solution was they created a team of full-time brand ambassadors. They developed a marketing strategy that involved listening, social media monitoring, I mean, and engagement of the entire public web. So they were ready to engage the customers, and women, not only on the official Facebook page or Twitter channel, but everywhere, including local discussion forums and blogs. And they utilized Brand Embassy's features in order to reach campaign objectives and analyze results. ING Life Insurance has been a dynamic and innovative market leader within Central Europe. They just chose recently Brand Embassy in order to raise online breast cancer awareness and promote their For You insurance plan. For You by ING was the first breast cancer specific insurance plan launched in the Czech Republic. 
So what were the results? After a period of just a few months, uh, the result was a 500% increase in engaged customers compared to previous ING marketing campaigns. So really a drastic improvement in the social reach of the brand towards the, uh, the very targeted audience uh, for the For You campaign. Brand Embassy identified nearly 1,500 breast cancer related conversations a month within the Czech Republic, typically in very local discussion forums and blogs that happen to be more important and more influential than Facebook or Twitter in this case. ING brand ambassadors engaged in over 500 conversations a month. So this is saying very clearly that it was not only about listening and finding out what the customers want when they, you know, discussing uh, problems like breast cancer, but the brand, the actual big brand in this example, was able to respond to engage the customers and therefore also lead them to, to the product website and to the offer that they had for them. And it happened only because they were able to listen to the customers and engage them in the same time. The second, uh, the second example is about uh, O2. O2, Telefonica O2, turned negative sentiment into satisfied customers and became the market leader in social care. The challenge of this, uh, one of the biggest mobile operators and actually the biggest, uh, one of the biggest operators in continental Europe was to take control over hundreds of customer inquiries and complaints published on Facebook, Twitter and discussion forums every single day and to improve overall negative sentiment around their brand. The solution was to establish a special team of social media specialists. They are called O2 gurus. They set a very specific key performance indicators that were including volume of sold inquiries, these outbound conversations every single day, the first response time, how much time did it take in average to respond to the customers, and also how the sentiment uh, was, uh, was changing during the time after they engaged the customer. And they chose Brand Embassy as a social media customer care platform for this. The results were quite astonishing and we have to say that we had not expected them. Uh, nine out of 10 customers say they are happy with quality of the, of the customer service on social media today. So uh, there was a really big change between before uh, social media campaign and social media customer care and after. Actually thousands of unhappy customers turned to satisfied customers with an over neutral sentiment and word of mouth reach over half a million users every month. The time needed to respond to customers on social media decreased in many cases from hours to minutes. So this were, these were just two very short case studies about how social media customer care can change also a marketing activities of your company. In first case, we were discussing about how ING, how ING used social media customer care for marketing purposes. In the second example, it was about Telefonica O2 uh, basically improving drastically uh, the negative sentiment around the brand to more neutral and to more satisfied customers. But uh, it's not only about that, it's, only, it's also about saving time and your money. Consumer behavior is changing and your industry is developing social media standards these days. Joining this trend later can be very difficult, difficult and expensive and this is an argument why to start now with social media customer care to some extent. So how to get started? What to do today if you decide that social media customer care is important to you and is important already to your customers? First of all, you need to build a team and nominate the responsible people. In one case, it can be just one of your colleagues who is you know, excited about social media and you can trust him to represent the company in, in a good way. In another example, it can be three, four, or even seven to ten people taking care of social media besides their other activities, typically in marketing or customer service. 
The second step is to set a company-specific communication standards. It's not about creating rules and bringing bureaucracy to the customer service operations on social media. Uh, that's not what your customers want and expect. But you should set a, a standard where, that you will be using when communicating with your customers on social media. So any, cast, any employee that will be communicating with your customers will always know how to behave. The third step is to empower the team that you nominated to social media customer care to act fast and in, in, independently. That means you as a manager uh, will be responsible for the independency so you can make sure that the first response times will be as low as possible and these people will be able to really solve the customer uh, problems as quickly as possible because this, this is what your customers expect on Facebook or on Twitter or also on other social media channels. The fourth step is obvious. You need to train and coach these people because in fact uh, social media customer operators, social media customer brand ambassadors are becoming your uh, press spokesman. These are the people who will be giving uh, verbal press releases basically every single day, hundreds of times, maybe 200 times. Because you need to realize the fact that everything that you say on the social media will be there for a long time and it can be helping a lot of customers in the future also. And the last step before uh, getting started with social media customer care is to set the right key performance indicators. Those metrics that you can really rely on in the future to, uh, that will be telling you if you are doing social media customer care in the right way. And of course, you'll need a technology of social media customer care uh, that will be helping you uh, doing these activities and not just taking more and more of your time uh, when taking care of one more thing in, uh, during your day. So this was just very quickly about how to get started with social media customer service. I'm sure that uh, you can have a lot of questions how to get started in your particular case, in your particular organization. We will be ready to, to answer some of your questions during the webinar and we'll be also ready to help you just after the webinar uh, by, uh, uh, via the chat. Uh, Tom, I will give you uh, the mic back to you to do some very short wrap-up. Sounds fantastic. And uh, thanks, Vic, and uh, thanks, Matt, for, for going through. We have a, a couple of questions that came in, and I was hoping uh, we have another couple of minutes. Maybe you guys would be willing to answer a few questions. You guys there? Definitely. Oh, okay, great. Help me. I'm just not good at seeing the questions and sharing the screen. Do you think that you can read us the question, then we will be able to respond them? Absolutely. That was my plan. So one of the question is, um, you, you talked a lot about kind of the, you talked about the process that people would go through. Who within an organization, I think people are interested in what job titles might you uh, consider as being the people that would, that would uh, be your social ambassadors uh, for an organization? Is it uh, your senior marketers, your junior marketers, is what kind of persona did you guys see in, in maybe some of your customers? Actually, thank you very much for this question. It's one of the burning questions of any company uh, deciding on how to get started with social media customer care. Our experience so far uh, with large organizations is usually that the digital marketing manager is becoming responsible for the social media customer care part and he needs to find and nominate the right person within the organization that will be the team leader for social media customer care. This is applicable mostly for the large companies. In case of mid-sized and smaller companies, usually the marketing director is responsible for kicking off uh, the social media customer care, but usually what is very important and very useful if you have from the very beginning two more or three more people involved and these are first one you need to have people on 
customer service or from your call center involved in the process of social media customer service from the very beginning. It's still about care, so these people should be there in the process. Secondly, you should also involve people within your organization who are responsible for public relations because whatever you will publish on social media, it will be there available for public. And thirdly, and this is very important, and we luckily see it in most of the cases of our large clients of Brand Embassy, that even the CMO, the chief marketing officer, or in some cases, the chief, operate, uh, chief operating officer or CEO is excited about social media customer care, and, is, and he's or she is excited about getting started and making sure that people within the company take it very seriously. So it's very good to have a support from C-level managers within the organizations. Okay, great. Um, as always, if, p if people have additional questions, please go ahead and send them in through the question pane. Uh, another question is, uh, how do you think about ROI on social? I know a lot of people are getting asked that you know, by their managers and by, by seniors, or, you know, senior uh, people within the organization. How would you guys think about explaining ROI on social back to an organization? It really, really depends on um, at how the organization is currently measuring um, these performance indicators. So when it comes to starting to invest on social, they have to choose the right KPIs. And these KPIs have to relate to what they're currently doing. So this means uh, they have to have an idea of the average number of calls that they get at the call center, how long the call it takes to deal with that call, um, and what is the average cost of those calls. So, and then when it starts doing, when it starts to, when the organization starts to do social uh, customer care, um, they want to start looking at those metrics to start understanding how much money are we saving. So, for example, I'm able to now deal with this conversation, this this customer call from this part of our business in a much shorter amount of time. What would that have cost us at the call center? And also, you want to start thinking about um, when, if, if I'm solving a customer's problem, and on Twitter, for example, my response is retweeted. So not only what, did I help that customer solve their problem, it was such a great response, they wanted to share that. My, the way I help that customer is going to be shared with others, and that information is going to be passed on to others. So these, these are calls that are never going to come to our call center. So what you want to do, really, um, is you want to, if you have a Kentico website, for example, you want to be measuring um, how many conversations are coming from your Facebook and your Twitter channels and, and heading towards the FAQ parts sections in your website because you're providing the, the links to the content that they need to, in order to solve their problems. And these are calls that are not coming through. So you're deflecting these potentially expensive calls. Um, other, other areas of ROI really depends on your own organization, but you really need to bring the same mindset that you currently have when you're, when you're coming to social. Okay, great. When, so kind of following up on that, and I know this is always an issue uh, or always a question that, that I hear as well, uh, as well as the attendees, um, any specific thoughts on what channels are better for based on your experience? I mean, obviously, we hear a lot of, well, you got to have a Twitter account or, well, you should be on Facebook. Based on your guys' experience and, and maybe some of the experiences of your customers, would you have any thoughts around you know, what maybe Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn is better for and, and things that people should be thinking about? Yeah, so um, that's a great question. So each, each different network has, their own, has its own unique benefits. So for example, on Twitter, um, if I'm dealing with customer problems on Twitter, um, it's a very public space. And um, all these conversations are searchable. And uh, the search function on Twitter is, is great, and it's used by a lot of their power users. So if I'm starting to have, um, so if I'm solving problems on that platform, when customers are looking for me to engage with, it, with me with a similar problem, they're actually able to quickly search Twitter uh, with the brand's name and a keyword from the problem and find the actual solution. So I'm a big fan of using Twitter because it, it pretty much is a, is a massive archive of previous conversations, which is searchable by users. So they can really try and find the answers themselves. Um, and then Facebook is a, great, uh, is a great way to solve customers' problems, but it's, it's much harder for other customers to discover content by other customers, and it's much harder for them to see all the older conversations. 
So it's great in one way um, because it's a great marketing platform. It's very visual. Um, you can reply using more embedded content on Facebook. Um, but it's less searchable. So I, I actually prefer Twitter because also don't forget that on Twitter, your customer also has to break their problem down into 46 characters. It makes the receiver of the phone, uh, makes it much easier for them to understand what the problem is because the customer is forced to get to the point. And also the solution is forced to get to the point as well. Um, and finally, uh, I definitely wouldn't um, overlook the rest of the social web, so forums and blogs and so on. Because a lot of these forums, they're very specific. And so, and they're they're more likely to be indexed by Google. So, when a customer starts to Google, uh, their problem is typically uh, the name of the brand and a few keywords for the problem. Google is going to take them to the right page in a forum, for example, because it's indexed well and it's relevant to the customer who goes there. Okay, great. Uh, last question is: um, some folks are interested on your thoughts around the crossover that happens and the customer journey from maybe going into a store or having a good or bad store experience to online. Have you guys seen any, uh, I call it a bleed over, but any positive or negative impact? Uh, it's something that I know a lot of people are interested in as they think about, you know, uh, how they connect social media, you know, to the real world of having someone in the store. Can you just sorry, Tom. Can you just repeat the, the first half of your question? Uh, yeah, no. Before you explain it. Yeah, no, no problem. It's kind of your thoughts on uh, your the experiences from your customers, your clients, your own opinions on the crossover from kind of the online world to the to uh, customer experiences I might have in a store, whether it's good or bad. I can pick up this one here. A way to speaking again. Um, what I saw just recently with a couple of our clients from mobile, uh, from telco, and also from banking is that sometimes when our people are visiting the, the actual brick and mortar uh, shops, uh, they have to stay in the you know queue and waiting for the uh, for the guy to 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 help them. And what they do actually that they log on to Twitter or to Facebook and they actually use social media and they are trying to solve the problem faster via the social media while waiting uh, for the employee to help them in, you know, in, in the shop. And usually or very often they get uh, the answer faster via the social media than uh, in the physical world. These are all, of course, just some of the examples, but we, we, we are seeing this more and more that people are more mobile, so they've been using social media for the customer service more and more via their smartphones. Okay, great. Well, we are kind of right at the end of our time here, uh, so I definitely appreciate everyone asking questions, uh, and I'm sure that people may have some follow-up. Um, I definitely encourage everyone listening to uh, take Brand Embassy up on their on their fantastic offer for Kentico customers, uh, which will get you going on a, a free <laughs> excuse me on a, on a free 14 day trial as well as a, a 15 percent discount. Um, and definitely, I think it's worth uh, taking a look at. Uh, and thanks, Vit. Uh, you can go to brandembassy.com slash sign up. Um, and as always, uh, Vit, if folks wanted more information, uh, what would be the easiest way to, to get in touch with you guys? I think it's, is it your Twitter handle, at brand underscore embassy? It's definitely like that. We are a social media company to a large extent, so definitely reach us over Twitter. You can see the handle just at the footer of uh, all of the slides we were going through. But of course, you can also reach us uh, via our uh, uh, via an, an email. So if you send us to info at brandembassy.com altogether, uh, we are there to help you with any questions or anything that we can help you. Um, uh, we'll be more than happy to some of the people who are uh, really excited about getting started with social media customer care to, to show them uh, what is our experience with, uh, with the other clients and how we can help them to getting started as soon as possible. 
Excellent. Well, thanks everyone for joining, and uh, thanks Vit and uh, and Matt as well for taking the time to to provide some fantastic information for us. Uh, as always, uh, you know, barring any major technical issues with uh, with our webinar system, we're going to look to post this information up to uh, our DevNet site, um, and we'll have the video available. So once again, uh, that, uh, Vit, Matt, and uh, Jorge, I want to thank you guys for taking the opportunity to speak with us. And, thank you uh, we very look much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Everyone you. have a great day. So take care.